Hello everybody, we are in math 1314. This problem deals with quadratic functions. In particular, we're going to be looking for how to find the vertex and intercepts in order to sketch the graph of the quadratic function. Let's read the problem. Use the vertex and intercepts to sketch the graph of the quadratic function. The quadratic function is f of x equals x squared plus 8x plus 6. Now notice, the only reason why you know that this is a quadratic function is because the variable here is x, notice the function is f, the variable is x, and the highest power of this variable is a 2. When the highest exponent of the function is 2, we know we are dealing with a quadratic function. Remember that quadratic functions, when we graph, we have a function that looks like a parabola, but the parabola either opens up or the parabola opens down. So keep that in mind as you're graphing the, the, this particular function. When you graph a quadratic function, there's five steps in graphing it. One of the steps will be to find the vertex and to find the intercepts. But let's go, let's start with step number one. In step number one, when we graph quadratic functions, we need to know whether our parabola opens up or down. To figure that out, we need to find the leading coefficient, a. The leading coefficient is a number that's in front of the variable that's being raised to the power of two, the highest exponent. In our case, it's a one. Notice it's a positive one, that means it's greater than zero. And we know if the leading coefficient is positive, our parabola will open up. And if our parabola opens up, our vertex, the lowest point on the graph, will be a minimum. So hence, in step number two, we will find that minimum. The minimum is represented by h and k. Notice it really doesn't matter what variables you use. h is the x-coordinate and k is the y-coordinate. So first we need to find the x-coordinate. Where is our function? To find h, we need to go back to the function. One of the things to notice is this function is written in general form. To find the vertex of the parabola in general form, here's the for formula. h equals negative b divided by 2 times a. We need to find what is b and what is a. a, we know it's a leading coefficient. b is a coefficient in front of variable x. Our b is 8. Let's substitute. Negative 8 divided by 2 times, and remember we found a in step number 1. It's a 1. Now we're going to simplify. Negative 8 divided by 2 times 1, which is a 2. Simplify further, negative 8 divided by 2 is a negative 4. What we just found, remember, we were looking for a point on the graph, h, k. And we found h to be negative 4. Now we're going to look for k. To find a k, we're going to take our h and we're going to substitute in the function f of negative 4. We have x squared, and we also have an x next to the 8. Every x will get substituted. We're going to plug in negative 4 for x in x squared, plus 8 times negative 4, plus 6. Let's further simplify. Negative 4 squared, notice we're squaring a negative number, the result will be positive, 16. We have a positive 8, and we're going to multiply by negative 4. We'll get you negative 32 plus 6. Okay, let's go back and let's make sure we did it right. When we square a negative, negative 4 squared is 16. Now, the next set of parentheses we're going to open up, positive 8 times negative 4 will get, you, get us a negative 32 plus 6. Let's simplify. 16 minus 32, that's a negative 16 plus 6. Okay. We're going to comp further combine like terms, negative 16 plus 6 is a negative 10. Hence, notice we found our k-coordinate, which is the y for this particular point, negative 10. Okay. Thus, our vertex is negative 4, negative 10. Okay, that's complete step number 2.
step number three. If we go back, if we go back and notice that first we found that we have a minimum, we found that point on the graph, but that's not enough for us to graph a curve. We need more points. What other points can we possibly find for this parabola? Notice what the question is asking. We found the vertex. Now we have to find the intercepts. When we graph parabolas, there are two types of intercepts. The x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. Okay. One of the things to remember is when we're finding the x-intercepts, we always let our function, hence our y, equal to zero. And we're looking, when we're looking for the y-intercepts, we always let our x equal to zero. Okay? Using this idea, let's find our x-intercepts. Remember, we're letting our function, and if we go back and look at our function, it's x squared plus 8x plus 6. We have to make it zero. We're looking for the x-intercepts. We want to know what, a, what is x when the y, the function, is zero. So now we have x squared plus 8x plus 6 equals to zero. Notice we have a quadratic equation. And you can solve this qu quadratic equation either by completing the square using co quadratic formula or factoring. Okay. Now if we go back and look, let's see if this problem can be factored. How many different ways we can multiply our integers and get 6? Well, that's 3 times 2, or negative 3 times negative 2. If I combine like terms, 3 and 2, 3 plus 2 is 5, and negative 3 minus 2 is a negative 5, none of these possibilities will give us a sum of 8. So this problem cannot be factored, hence I'm going to use quadratic formula. Remember that the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2 times a. Let's solve. Negative 8, remember our b was 8, plus or minus square root of b squared, that's 8 squared, minus 4 times a. Our a was 1. And our c is the constant 6. And we're going to divide all that by 2 times a. And remember, a was 1. Now x equals, if we go back, negative 8 plus or minus square root. Now, when we simplify what's inside the radical, 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 6 8 squared is 64, minus 4 times 6, negative 4 times 6 is a negative 24, times 1 is negative 24. So we have 64 minus 24. We're going to divide all of that by 2 times 1, which is 2. So now we have negative 8 plus or minus square root. Okay, let's go back and look. 64 minus 24, this can be further simplified to a 40. And we divide all that by 2. So now we have negative 8 plus or minus square root. Okay. Now, you, to simplify this particular radical, you need to be looking for perfect squares. Why perfect squares? Well, notice the index here is a 2. You don't have to write it, but if you do write it, but if you do write it, you'll notice that this index will help you. will point out that sometimes this number... The stuff that's inside the radical, we call it radicant, can be simplified into perfect squares. Well, 40 is a product of 4 times 10, and 4 is a perfect square. So we can further simplify this. Negative 8 plus or minus square root of 4 times square root of 10 divided by 2. Negative 8 plus or minus, square root of 4 is 2, square root of 10, we're going to divide this by 2. Mm -hmm. Now notice that the 2 that we have in the denominator is actually a denominator of negative 8, 
and the denominator of 2 square root of 10 as well. We can further simplify negative 8 divided by 2 is a negative 4, plus or minus 2 divided by 2, we can reduce that to a 1, square root of 10. Okay. Those are x-intercepts. So what we do have is we have two extra points on the graph. Remember, we, we let our y equal to 0, but our x is now negative 4 plus square root of 10 and negative 4 minus square root of 10. Okay. But x-intercepts are not the only intercepts. Now let's find the y-intercepts. To find the y-intercepts, we let our x equal to 0. That means that we're looking for f of 0. Going back to our function, notice here's our function. We're, gonna, we're, going to, we're going to substitute 0 for x. So now we have f of 0 equals 0 squared plus a times 0 plus 6. Once we simplify, we found our y-coordinate to be a 6. So the y-intercept is 0 for x and 6. For y. Okay, let's go back and see what we have done. Step number one, we found whether our vertex was a minimum or a maximum. Step number two, we found what is the vertex, negative 4, 10. Then in step number three, we found our x-intercepts. We have two of them, negative 4, plus square root of 10, 0, and negative 4 minus square root of 10, 0, we also found our y-intercept. All right, now since we have all of our four steps ready and done with, we are ready to actually graph the function. To graph the function, we're going to use our handy dandy calculators. So let's look at the calculator screen. All right, now remember to turn on your calculators. You'll press on the on button, and my calculator happens to be on already. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit out of the screen so I can show you guys how to get into the plot mode or the plot screen. On the left-hand side of the calculator screen, you will see y equals. It's a gray button. Top, the first one from the top, let's click on y equals. This allows you to plug in as many functions. In my case, right here, you can see as many as um, seven different functions. But for us, we only need one. So just remember that our function is x squared plus 8x plus 6. All right, so let's type x squared plus 8x plus 6. Once we have our function typed in, we click on the graph button, and we can see our function. Now, sometimes, depending on whether you've used your calculator before or maybe you've borrowed the calculator, your particular uh, Cartesian coordinate system might not be as big as mine or might be too big, so you can't see your function com completely. In order to see the function, we can click on Zoom. And you can either zoom in or zoom out, depending on what you want to do, or you can play with the window. Now, notice on the window, you have x min and x max. That means my x-axis starts at the lowest x to be negative 10, and at the highest x to be 10, where the scale of x is 1. That means that the distance between each of the hash units, or hash little marks, is 1 unit apart. And same thing for the y max and y min and the y scale. So if you would like to recreate exactly the same graph as you see on my screen, then make sure your window is as such. So again, when we click on graph, here's our function. Notice how the function opens up, and that's exactly what we predicted. And there you go. That's your function, quadratic function.